Hey folks, Jimmy here, aka Pal Over Dead. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another issue of Mortal Realms Magazine. As per usual, if you like these videos, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and drop a comment down below. It's always great to hear from you guys, and I do appreciate every comment I get as well. Right, jumping into it, this is issue 50, um, so it means we've got 30 issues left. Um, in all honesty, 30 is not many, so we will plow through them pretty quick, or it feels like. Um, with this issue though, we get uh, some Sigmarite Ruins, um, yeah, some people love to rain, I'm not always very fussed, um, I will wait until summer to paint these because I will spray paint them over everything else, which is far better and far faster. Into the actual issue itself though, we have some cool bits and pieces, so we have uh, information about Vanguard Chambers and how Vanguard Chambers work. So as long as the Vanguard Chambers exist, the enemies of Sigmar can never rest easy. Battling across the wilds of the mortal realms, these rangers, scouts and shock troops fight an endless war against the God King's enemies. The Vanguard Chambers can either support the Strike Chambers or act alone. So the Vanguard Chambers, they are the advanced troops, so they are um, scouts, they are rangers, they are um, ahead of the main force a lot of the time. Uh, and they can kind of swiftly to react to a lot of enemies and stuff like that as well. So they are pretty, pretty cool. The Vanguard Chambers though mainly kind of exist uh, in this kind of form. So they'll have Lord Aquila as their lead, uh, Knight Zephyros, Knight Azeros, Knights of Venator as well. Uh, but they also have uh, Vanguard Paldors, Vanguard Hunters, Vanguard Raptors, and Ether Wings as well, which the Ether Wings normally accompany the Vanguard uh, Raptors just there as well. So they are kind of bird specialists and everything like that. Pretty cool information there. Um, and the chamber would normally exist with three of the knights. And then they would also have the nine Hunter retinues, nine, three Palador retinues, and three Raptor retinues as well um, to make up their main force. Then we have more information about Shaiish, which Shaiish has been, of course, the Realm of Death, which is always very fascinating to learn about. Uh, so, the Prime Inlands Part 3. This is all in the Age of Chaos. Uh, so, a series of defeats saw Nagash lose much of the control he had over Shaiish and led him to breaking his allegiance with Sigma. He withdrew from the conflict to gather his power, but it would be many years before he recovered his true strength. So, if you're into your kind of your timeline and everything like that, Nagash suffered massive defeats during the Age of Chaos. Um, he was also to the point where he was pushed back and not himself in any way, shape, or form. He was pretty battered and everything like that at the hands of Archeon um, and was kind of forced to retreat. The novel Nagash deals with the aftermath of a lot of this and kind of how Nagash kind of builds back up. Uh, and back to his kind of former glory and everything like that and building up to his power that we know in the Soul Wars um, which is pretty cool to read uh, and this timeline does help out a massive amount if you do like your novels and everything like that as well going forward though we have the Ogon War tribes as well listed here so they are a force of destruction so they are huge, strong and very, very hungry Ogors have feasted upon the inhabitants of the mortal realm since the age of myth. Ogors fight in clans known as Moor Tribes. These Moor Tribes are both revered and feared across the mortal realms, for they have the might to destroy empires. So, with the Ogre Moor Tribes, they are, they are kind of semi-organised in a lot of ways, uh, and they do destroy everything in their path, pretty much, uh, and they are designed to kind of eat as much meat as possible and everything like that. They are very, very, very hungry buggers. Uh, they are pretty cool as well. So they have two main tribes. So they are gut busters. So your gut busters are very, very foot mounted uh, and everything like that. So they will stampede across the realms in search of fresh meat and new shinies, which is their word for treasure. Uh, and they make use, a uh, great use of black powder weapons and noblar helpers which Noblars are your little kind of goblins, uh, which are used for odd jobs and kind of help you build deadly inventions out uh, of scrap and everything like that as well. And then there are the Beast Claw Raiders. So Beast Claw Raiders are mounted, they are cursed by the Everwinter. 
uh, which is a magical storm that follows the nomadic hunters wherever they go. Um, they ride vast beasts of war to battle, including frost covered thunder tusks, nearly indestructible stone horns, and hardy mourn fangs as well. Uh, so, pretty cool stuff. And they also have a lot of uh, kind of a very affinity with beasts as well. Then you've got your battle information, which is part of the history of the mortal realms, which is Childs of a Bone, which is uh, the Moor tribes and the Ogles going up against uh, skeleton hordes and part of your Ossiar Bone Reapers and everything like that as well. Um, and the forces in the Gash in that fashion, which has some pretty cool artwork as well. None there, which is yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. You read through you how to build using the right rooms, dead easy. Uh, there's only one part that needs to be glued together, and um, that's it. So you just literally clip the rest off, and that's it. Have fun, um, yeah, and then it'll be time to paint. Painting them up if you want to paint them this way, you can, it's fairly easy. Um, you can paint stone in many different ways so in all honesty you don't have to do it this way there are other ways of doing it uh, i did a video of it ages and ages and ages ago which i will link to uh up above which kind of went through different painting different stone techniques as well um not in the same way that this is but you can do it that way if you wish to um i will probably do an update video with some other techniques at some point otherwise though fairly easy to paint um, you can't go far wrong with them and if you are following their guide then that was how it will look um, yeah simple really your war your kind of more rules is your core rules and it is about war scroll battalions as well so it's about having a, a, a kind of a battalion a war scroll for an actual battalion and how they will work and everything like that so you organize your forces and then you can kind of have everything going around on there as well so it's pretty cool so you tell you can kind of work out everything like that with war skull battalions which the first war skull battalion that we get is the execution horde which will be consisting of one lord executioner and three units of spirit hosts um you know pretty decent and uh it can be quite handy to have these guys as well and it'll give you how these guys will work in kind of cooperation with each other to do everything as well if you wish to then your battle plan is uh, headhunt it's called uh, since the age of chaos much of Shalan has fallen into ruin once great cities are now home to nothing but the dead and the dead in the mortal realms do not rest easy which is uh, very very true really uh, so with this bit it is fairly easy to do um, it is a pretty interesting battle, it will require the three large battle mats uh, and it will require you to have uh, an execution horde which is of course Lord Executioner and three units of one spirit host, ten chain rasps and a dreadblade harrow going up against Stormcast Eternals in the shape of a Knight Quester, five liberators, three prosecutors and three retributors. Uh, very very easy kind of a simple kind of way of doing it and you can spread them out quite well along there with one objective in there as well uh, and the idea is if you can kind of destroy as many uh, as you can so for instance if the knight quester is killed the knight haunt player will score three victory points however if a lord executioner is slain the stormcast eternal player only gains one victory point uh, so it is basically all about how you kind of get your victory points out of everything as well. Um, so yeah, so it's all about controlling the objective and killing the leader for uh, each army as best as you possibly can. Um, so whoever can kind of complete both tasks is more than likely going to be the victor. Um, and yeah, so pretty cool. Should be really good fun to do that one. And. Then moving on, so next week we get the Lord Coordinator, uh, the Arcane Engine, it's a nice model, it is a very very nicely sculpted model, uh, probably one of the best post Stormcast that you can get. 
and then issue 52 we will get chain rasp board um, very very pretty much exactly the, well it is the same as what we've had with shoe one you know what I see so 49 issues ago we had that chain rasp board um, when we also had the first three sequiturs um, so we are getting some more of them to boost out your uh, Knight Hunt army so very very easily done with these guys so it should be good fun going forward though because we're going to have only 30 issues left as I've said earlier um, very very good stuff coming up in the magazine it should be pretty cool um, and yeah, I'll be available for a ride what comes after the Mortal Realms who knows there are rumours of a new 40k magazine uh, coming out which we'll see you know honestly we'll see what's happening with that uh, but if there is who knows I might even jump on board with that who knows uh, right that's it then for me so have a very good day I hope you enjoyed the video and as, as I said hit the like button if you did and I will catch you in the near future bye bye now Thank you.